always worried about the deadline. It's the most critical thing that could make or break you. But delay in, in an owner's perspective is just inexcusable. The single biggest problem that Hanson Youngkin had to solve was the immovable deadline. They simply could not move the practical completion date. When we considered building a performing arts centre and a theatre, Western Sydney and Sydney is similar to Manhattan and New York. With such a huge population of 2.7 million just within 10 kilometres here of West HQ, and that by international scales is the same size as Chicago. So it became a natural consideration to duplicate the infrastructure provided in Sydney, the Sydney Opera House, so that we could create the Opera House of Western Sydney. So the project started um, in December 2017 and the original completion date was around the end of November 2019. Because ultimately we had Keith Urban appearing here on the 12th of December regardless and the curtain needed to go up and the lights needed to be on and the building needed to be completed. I was very worried about the deadline. It was a complicated job. No walls in this place are square. The complexity that the project provided in, enabled Hanson Youngkin to start to utilise some of the digital technologies that we have been deploying for the last five or six years. And it was a fantastic opportunity to showcase exactly what stage we are at within our digital journey. What was amazing for me was that in this day and age, you could hold a meeting, have discussion, and then within a very short turnaround, within 24 hours, you could see the implication of what your request was. We try to utilise technology as much as possible as a tool to de-risk the construction process for us, to give us an idea of what we might be coming up against in a week, two weeks, or four or five weeks' time. 4D and 5D just helped from a planning perspective. It helped see into the future a little bit where we would be at a certain point in time, but it also helped us a lot with our communication. And that's when Autodesk technology was, was very key in giving us levels of comfort that the project timeline was on time. One of the better moments that came out of this project was seeing the value that our site manager saw when he realised that the 4D sequencing wasn't just seen to be something that is new. The value that he saw once he realised that certain aspects had to be built before certain times and when he realised that we had already ironed out those issues for him that he knew that that was a de-risk then it was a massive side to see that a bit of a relief on him. On site, we used mobile Autodesk software, BIM 360. It was mainly used to manage the defects on the job, but being able to walk around with a mobile in hand, iPad, identify and close out the defects in a timely manner meant that everyone was kept in the loop and we could make sure that we fixed the things that needed fixing as we went. The design of the Sydney Coliseum Theatre evolved and it evolved over a number of years, people started actually to believe in what we were going to build. And that necessitated changes in design to accommodate the expanded use that we did never ever considered back in 2012. So they started a process of looking at what potentially needed to be changed to ensure that the building was uh, fit for the intended purpose. The only catch with that was that they were being reintroduced once the construction had commenced, which is always a lot harder. We basically worked the program and figured out that we could just about get there with maybe about a week to spare. There was no contingencies, there was really no room for the unknown, so it put a lot of pressure on a lot of our subcontractors as well. Uh, a lot of reputations were on the line, so it basically just meant that we had one go at everything and it, everything needed to go pretty much perfectly to uh, get there by the time that the client needed a facility. The first key design change that occurred was the structural steel and the fly tower. And that needed to change to be capable of being able to hold international musicals. So that was fairly essential, but that was a big change in the design because to actually change the engine in a car, you can understand how considerable that was. 
For a performance, you have the stage, and that's what we all see. And what the audience sees is inside the letterbox of the Prasini March. And what's above the Prasini March is the mystery of the theatre. And that's what, where all the magic happens that brings a show to life for the audience. So you've got the aspect that you need to install double the amount of fly lines, which can't be overlooked. But the biggest problem was that the change was instructed at a point in time when we were ready to construct the structure of the fly tower where the rigging system sits, and that structure needed to be bolstered, it needed to be increased, which all in all meant that the project was uh, delayed by about six to eight weeks. As we progressed the building, the Australian Ballet visited and became encouraged that they'd like to hold events in Western Sydney. But unfortunately, our staging was not large enough. So the next change that we considered and we implemented was to change the size of the stage. In about June of 2019, we basically got an instruction to increase the size of the orchestra pit, which had been already constructed. One of the key challenges around this was that at the time, the fit out of the auditorium was being undertaken, which meant that there was 20 metres of scaffold above the area that needed to be Changed. We realised after the Sydney Symphony Orchestra came here that we needed to more than one and a half times increase the size of the pit to hold nearly 80 musicians. Those changes basically pushed the completion date past the end of 2019 and into 2020. Throughout the project, we're always sitting on a knife's edge. Will it be finished on time? Because we then need to switch into then looking at the operation of the facility and be ready for acts, to, because it's one thing building it, it's another thing that we need people in here actually performing. So we started to, in the second half of the project, look at and be very concerned about, will they complete the project on time? We had to go back, redesign some of our own work to fit in with the building. You know, that does have an impact on time, but we were able to minimise it because it was done in the BIM 360 models. Industrialised construction is the taking of manufacturing process and methodology and applying it to the construction process. Adopting manufacturing processes can help construction in a few different ways. The ability to manufacture something off-site so you can actually do it in parallel to some of the on-site activities. From a cost perspective, you know, it, it, it can be beneficial because you are manufacturing something in a controlled environment. As part of the work we did here, we prefabricated two major rises on the northern end of the building. Being able to prefabricate these off-site allowed Hanson Youngkin to expedite the program because it was on the critical path of the program due to the fact that the top of these rises supported a major steel structure. It represents the single biggest opportunity for the industry in a generation, but it also represents an enormous challenge in that the whole of the industry needs to completely reimagine what it means to construct. So by us prefabricating these major rises, our on-site time for the rises was cut down to a couple of days as opposed to 10 weeks. So we saved a significant amount of time. All of these factors were sort of screaming towards the completion date and the commissioning of the building. The next change came along, which was uh, redesign the whole audio system from ground up. This is to handle a larger range of performances in the venue, anything from a symphony all the way up to a rock concert. It put a lot of pressure on the procurement because it needed to get here in time, but it also introduced commissioning process that was different. When they did that commissioning process, they needed a complete silence in the stage space and in the auditorium, so you weren't able to have any construction process, drills, hammers, etc., going on. So Hanson Newcomb arranged specific times in that commissioning period where they would shut the site to all contractors except for the people commissioning the speakers. And the whole build was basically coming really, really close to, to that end date. That was really, really hard to manage. So we needed to introduce shifts to, to have the commissioning happening in quiet periods and then working either at nights or vice versa. We're running out of time. Everyone's just stressing out, Vanya's stressing out, <laughs> I'm stressing out. There was no contingencies, there was really no room for the unknown. The most rewarding time was probably the last 
four weeks because that's when you sort of started to get the sense that we were going to achieve what we set out to do two years before. I think the first show that we came to was very nervous because I think we were, we were experiencing the theatre for the first time just like everyone else was, including <laughs> the client and their operational team. Uh, the funny story is, like, I, I've got to share this one with you, is that even the night that uh, Keith Urban performed and we were sitting in the audience and you're waiting for everything to go wrong. And Keith Urban, he went, vroom, vroom, type thing, and, and the place shook. And then this haze came down and everyone thought, wow, opening night, how good is this? You know, what a great effect. And I turned out, there's a friggin' builder's dust coming off the roof. True story. It was a great thing. Sydney Coliseum is definitely the greatest uh, achievement of my construction career so far. The biggest achievement was really the project team led by our project manager, Vanya, displaying to the board the progress of the project, working through the models, showing us the latest images captured through drone and performance reporting on the project. Other companies can learn from Hanson Youngkin by the way they take a long-term view of investment. That's not just investment in technology, that's importantly investment in people. And it's investing and having the right blend of skill set to deliver projects more effectively, to deliver projects more efficiently. I think to understand success, you need to understand the challenge. The challenge with construction is that construction needs to take a digital idea and make it into something physical. And what you do in between is really the magic. What Hans and Youngkin have done is that they've applied everything that they know about the digital construction process and a hundred years of construction excellence and applied it on the Sydney Coliseum project. They are at the vanguard now of digital construction. Hans and Youngkin know the industry. They are one of the earliest adopters of digital technology to the construction site. And I think what's interesting about Hans and Youngkin is they see it as a way to delivering an improved outcome. Connected construction represents the opportunity to bring together all of our tool sets and therefore the concept of big data and, and the analytics that are associated with that becomes the framework under which we can capture and share our knowledge. It's been so well received because it is a changing of the guard, it's a changing of the community. The Sydney Coliseum project represents a gift to the people of Western Sydney and what it says is that it doesn't matter who you are or where you come from or what your demographic is, you have access to a world-class performing arts centre. The spirit of Hanson Young is very much summed up by our tagline driven by challenge, built with pride. It runs to the heart of what we do, which is deliver challenging construction projects. And we take a huge amount of pride in what we do and how we deliver them. They were amazing. They did a great job. They delivered it on time, on budget. They're part of the soul in this place. Nearly 12 months later, the relationship between the two partners is that we are partners and the relationship's so strong. And I think it's because, and I know it's because, that together we've created something very special and both organisations are extremely proud of it.